we're going to find the volume of the region bounded by y equals x squared, the vertical line x equals 3, and the x-axis. And specifically, I want to find the volume when this is rotated around the x-axis. Uh, first thing, very, very important to have a good picture. Um, for some of these, I'm actually going to try to visualize what's happening. When they get a little bit more complicated, I think you have to just kind of simplify it down and, and think from a formula standpoint. But uh, at least for the basic ones, this is pretty easy to see. So this thing is being rotated around the x-axis. We're going to get this kind of uh, horn-shaped graph that uh, looks something like this. And I'm going to use the method that I normally refer to as the disk method here. Uh, which is basically to take different disks, such that they look like a, a quarter or something like that, and stack them on top of each other. And so you have little tiny disks here, and you're getting bigger and bigger disks. So what's happening is this whole thing here is kind of roundish and looks something kind of like this. And so you have this kind of roundish, horn-shaped graph. Now, one way you can visualize this is to actually try to draw that little disk. And if you actually draw that little disk, that disk has basically a circular face, and it has a very thin width. Okay, and you can, you can kind of try to draw that little very thin width in here if you want to. It's a little bit hard to show. But here's the important thing. All you're doing is writing the equation of one of those disks. And we're going to add those disks up, starting here and moving over to the other end. And of course, the way that we can find that sum is by using an integral. So the volume of one of those disks, and we refer, we refer to that as dv, the change in the volume as you move along. dv, the volume of one of those disks, is just the volume of a, of a cylinder, pi r squared h. And it's really just a matter of substituting this in. In fact, uh, really the only calculus that happens here is the aspect where you're trying to figure out the link using an integral. Uh, beyond that, this is really just algebra and graphing, uh, writing in terms of different variables. So the important thing here is, now when I draw this, um, Forrester does this a little bit differently. Forrester always draws a strip perpendicular to the axis, and he takes that strip and rotates it around the axis. Um, and all the information that he needs for his equation is in that little strip that he draws. Um, at least this first example, I wanted to show you the actual cylinder there. Um, but the way Forrester would do it, he draws a strip perpendicular to the axis of rotation. That is absolutely huge. Okay, Forrester's strip is going to go right here. Forrester would probably use a marker that works. Here we go. Uh, Forrester's strip would be right here. Now, Forrester's going to show that with the width. Uh, my width is taken care of in my diagram uh, over off here uh, in my picture of the disk. But again, in Forrester's book, he doesn't always draw that disk in there, or at least in his setups, he focuses on the strip. And you've got to focus on this in terms of coordinates on your graph. All right? On your graph, that is the point x comma y. It's changing as you move along the curve. So you've got to write in terms of variables, not in terms of uh, constant values, unless you have a value that doesn't change. Okay, so here's the important thing. What's the radius? Well, the radius here is represented by the y value. The height, and again, we're talking about the height of that cylinder there. You can see that little width of the cylinder. It goes from side to side. That infinitely thin width is a dx. And what that tells you is that your equation needs to be written in terms of x, which works out fine here. Uh, so my dv equation is going to be dv equals pi y squared dx. And notice I put that y in parentheses there because um, to write everything in terms of x, I'm going to have to substitute place of that. And so just really important to keep those parentheses there to, to make fewer mistakes. So the final integral, uh, it's going to be the pi y squared uh, value here. Um, I probably want to write this in terms of x though. I know that y is the same thing as x squared in my equation, so I'm going to put an x squared in, in place of that y. And again, that's why I've got the parentheses there, because whatever's going in those parentheses ends up getting squared. And that's really going to make a difference when we have to find a length by subtracting or something like that later on. Um, so, final integral. You've got pi times the y value squared. That's going to be x squared squared dx. 
An integral is a sum. It starts at a certain value and ends at a certain value. What am I summing in this case? I'm summing a bunch of cylinders, okay? And actually, they're going from side to side. So you have them starting here, going over here. Uh, where do you start? Where do you end? They have to be x values. So I start at 0, I go over to 3, that's my integral. Uh, if you want to simplify, if you want to factor some things out, you can factor out the pi. Uh, that's going to be x to the fourth dx as your final integral. I'm going to stick with the equation y equals x squared, and um, still looking at the region bounded by the line y equals 3, or x equals 3, which of course is a vertical line and the x-axis. So once again, I'm looking at this region right here. I want to change the game a little bit here, and I want to rotate this thing around the line x equals 3. And notice that this is still going to make something solid. It's, it's going to make a graph that's solid. Uh, it's going to be solid. It's going to be kind of horn-shaped here if you want to finish out what this thing would look like. Um, visually, now I'm rotating around a vertical axis instead of a horizontal axis. And so again, visually, because this is solid, I can still do this using disks. Um, I can still use the disk method here, but I'm spinning in this direction now, so those disks are now going to look more like this. And again, uh, you can draw kind of a, a very thin little width there to your disk. And the important thing here is the radius. That radius needs to go perpendicular to the axis of rotation and specifically, it needs to be going to that actual graph. Now, the thing that you have to focus on here is the original graph was y equals x squared, okay? And people have a tendency when they uh, do this to use the graph on the wrong side. Uh, remember that this is all kind of just a, a ghost graph over here to help you remember what's happening. That's your actual equation. That's what everything needs to be written in terms of, unless you're going to go find that other equation there. And that's something that's very, very easy to make a mistake here. Now, uh, same kind of thing as before. Basically, uh, you need to find the volume of one of those disks. It's a cylinder, so individually its volume is the area of the base times the height, which is pi r squared h. Um, and we're really just filling in values here. Um, once again, I'm going to draw in my little radius, and it's got to be drawn to the equation that you were actually given. So that little radius needs to go from that axis of rotation, perpendicular to the axis of rotation, over to the side. That's the point x comma y. Don't use this point over here. You don't have the equation of that line. Okay? And same kind of thing. Uh, of course, pi stays the same. That's dv equals pi times the radius squared. And here's where the game changes. Notice, the radius is no longer, um, well, this time it's side to side, and you think, oh, okay, the, the radius is going to be an x value. Uh, but no, it's not an x value. The x value is telling you how far over you are from the y-axis. You need to know how far you are from the line x equals 3, okay? Think about distance. It's an elementary topic. If you want to find the distance between two points, if you've got a horizontal line, if you've got something at 10 over here and something at 4 over here, what do you do? You subtract those values. You take the larger minus the smaller, okay? And you don't have to worry about absolute values or anything like that as long as you do larger minus smaller. So, larger value is always going to be 3. That's staying the same as you move up and down here um, and keep stacking these disks. The smaller, of course, is going to be the x value. So the radius is 3 minus x, and that value is being squared, and that's why it's so important to have those parentheses there. Okay? Now, the height of your little cylinder, that of course is vertical this time, it's a dy. And so what that tells you is you're going to have to write your final equation in terms of y. All right. You go back at the original equation, basically I need to substitute in for x here. I'm going to have to go back to this original equation. Um, I can take both sides to one-half power, uh, and that means that x is going to equal y to the one-half. So that's going to be the replacement that I'm going to make. And again, if you can't write the equation in terms of the other variable and you have to do a replacement, that might be a case where the process you're using isn't really the process that you want to be using. Um, and I put together my final integral now. Remember that an integral is a sum, and it's a sum of these disks. This time they're being stacked all the way up. Um, and so we're working in terms of y here. You've got pi times 3 minus y to the 1 half 
quantity squared. Again, you can multiply it out on the AP exam. This is usually going to be on the calculator part, though, times dy. And you're starting at 0, and you go all the way up to a y value, a y value of 9. And that is what your integral is going to look like. This time I'm going to look at the equation y equals x squared. And I'm going to look at the region bounded by y equals x squared, the y-axis, and y equals 9. And uh, again, if y is 9, x is going to have to be 3 here. So that's the point, 3 comma 9. So I'm looking at this region here being rotated this time around the y-axis. So it's going to create this kind of uh, wine glass shape, kind of a tulip type shape, that type of thing. So again, you may want to draw in the other part of your graph over here, uh, but it's going to look something kind of like that. Now, uh, again, if you want to visualize this completely, uh, you can actually draw in. Uh, once again, this is going to be solid on the inside, so disk method works great here. Um, you can actually draw your little cylindrical disk there. Um, again, in the Forrester book, he's just going to draw a strip and that represents the radius and it represents the thickness and that strip gets spun to create the disk. Um, the key is that radius or that strip always perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And so you have that value that comes in right here. Um, and again, you need a point on your actual graph, make sure it's the original graph, and the volume of one of those disks is pi r squared h. In this case, the radius here is represented by the x value, so it's the radius squared times the height. The height, it's the height of one of those little cylinders. That, of course, is a dy, okay? It's vertical this time telling me that this whole equation needs to be written in terms of y. So, um, I can take both sides to the one-half power here, and I find out that x is equal to y to the one-half. That's going to be my substitution here. Now, I need to add these disks, starting with the very small disk at the bottom, adding all the way up to the top. How do you know? Because it's a dy value, so we're moving in the y direction as we add these things up. So, it's going to be the sum from 0 to 9, okay, y values of pi times y to the 1 half squared dy. Of course, that simplifies down just to y if you want to use that. 